Okay, we've been talking about Genesis 1-3 where God says, let there be light and there was light. One of the problems that we have is when we regard the universe itself as a source. The universe is not a source. The universe is a product. God is the source. Light does not come from the stars. Light does not come from the sun. Even in our own world we know that the sun and the stars are not the only source of light. If we believe in lightning bugs, and if we believe in lightning, and if we believe in fire, if we believe in phosphorus, God is the source of light. God has loaned His light to the stars. Now, we, we haven't come to the stars yet, though. That, that's the fourth day. But right now, we're just talking about light. Uh, on the first day, and if you notice over behind my shoulder, you see that on the first created, creative day, there, there's light. But we need to talk about this business of a day. Verse 4, God saw that the light was good. God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. There was evening and there was morning one day. Okay, two big questions here. Uh, one is the question of um, how can there be a day without the sun? What is a day without the sun? And the second question is in what sense can day and night be divided? In what day can light and darkness be divided without the sun? Well, um, again, God, uh, the, the universe is not the source of light, and the universe is not the source of time. Time is not an inevitable product of the universe. Time is a product of God's design. And He can design time more than one way. After day four, He designed time in terms of the earth revolving around the sun. But there was a measure of time in the first three days. Now, I'm about to say something which is hard to understand if you're a native English speaker. I want you to try to stay with me, okay? Because I won't say anything during our studies which is deeper than this. I won't say anything more philosophical or harder to understand than this, okay? This will be the hardest thing that I say to understand. I think I also said it in John 1. But see, there are correspondences between John 1 and Genesis 1. They begin the same ways, don't they? In the beginning. In John 1, we learn about God speaking. In, uh, excuse me, in Genesis 1, we learn about God speaking. God said, let there be light. In John 1, we learn about God who is the Logos, who is the Word. In Genesis 1, we learn what the creation is like. In John 1, we learn what the Creator is like. So there are these correspondences. Okay, here's the hard thing. Stay with me. It's easy to think that God gave us the gospel to help us understand the world. Creation, life, death, everything. That's not true. That's the wrong way to look at it. That's backwards. God did not give us the gospel to help us understand the world. God gave us the world to help us understand the gospel. The gospel came first. Before there was ever a world, there was a gospel. 
Because before there was ever a world, before there was ever a universe, there was God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Living, loving, purposing, planning, relating. God made the world as a context in which He might make creatures like Himself whom He would love, who would love Him, and who would have fellowship with Him forever. So He had to make a world in which there were realities which corresponded to the realities in God. God is a Father. You cannot get into the world without a Father. You may not know your Father. You may not like your Father. But you have a Father. So we have this reality of a God and a Son. It's got nothing to do with gender. Don't think that mothers are being left out and daughters are being left out because it's the same reality. It's the same reality. You have this thing called love, but there's more than one kind of love. There's the love that a husband has for a wife, and God loves us like that, with a jealous, a righteously jealous, an exclusive love. God also lo loves us like a father loves a child, with a protective love. And um, the world, marriage itself, is a picture of our relationship with God because Israel is seen as being married to Jehovah, to Yahweh, and the church is seen as being engaged to Christ. Sex is a picture of heaven because sex is the unveiling of a glory, a beautiful glory, and a union with a beautiful glory, and that's what heaven is. Heaven is the, un it's not sexual, it's spiritual. It's not biological in heaven, it's theological. The sexual and the biological are just a shadow of the real, which is spiritual and theological. But we're given these relationships and these experiences on earth so that we won't just read in the Bible black print on white paper as a father pities his children, so the Lord loves his own. We don't just read that and say, what does that mean? But we become a father and we become a mother. And we, be, we feel it in our gut. And we think, you mean God loves me like that? We fall in love with somebody. You say, you mean God loves me like that? Yes, except for much, 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 much more. What you feel is the tiny shadow. What God expresses is the substance. Okay, I'm just saying that to say that time is not a reality which is produced by the existence of the sun and the moon and the stars and the turning of the earth and the orbit of the earth. Time is a creation of God which He can express any way He wants to. And I can only conclude that a day before, before the fourth day is an alternating period of light and darkness. An alternating period of light and darkness. Is it hard to imagine? Yes, it's hard to imagine. God is also hard to imagine. But you know, He doesn't give us every detail. When you get, when you get to the when you get to the end of John 21, when John the Apostle is writing about one human life, the three years of ministry of Jesus of Nazareth, and some people say that John really only wrote about, about one year, a little over one year of his ministry. John says in John 21, he says, hey, I didn't tell you everything. There's no way to tell you everything. It'd fill all the books in the world if I tried to tell you everything. Well, if that's true about the one or three years of Jesus' ministry, what do you think is true about the creation of the universe? He doesn't tell us everything, but what He tells us is true. 
and what he tells us is sufficient. In 1925, there was a trial in Dayton, Tennessee, which was arranged by people who wanted to make American education more secular. It was a trial that had to do with teaching evolution in the public schools. And the trial was a great, great, great success for um, the evolutionists and the unbelievers. And the trial was a great, great embarrassment for Christians. And the height of the embarrassment is when the agnostic lawyer on one side called the Christian lawyer to sit in the chair on the witness stand. And he asked him, and by the way, that lawyer, that Christian lawyer died five days after the trial was over. So he was a sick and a confused and a dying man. His name was William Jennings Bryan. He had been a candidate for President of the United States. He had been a Secretary of State and he has a, a little Christian college named after him in Dayton, Tennessee. And Clarence Darrow, the attorney for the evolutionists, said, I see that light exists on the first day, but I see that the sun doesn't exist till the fourth day. Where did the light come from? And Williams Jennings Bryan made a mess of it made a mess of it. You see, the problem was that he believed the Bible, but he never studied it. He believed that the Bible was true, but he didn't know what the Bible said. He was not a student of the Bible. And it was a tremendous victory for the anti-Christians. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com. So, there, there are a couple of things that, that we need to understand. Um, and one thing that we understand is, or that we hope to understand, is the source of light. Look at 1 Timothy 6.16. 1 Timothy 6.16. I, I was told that I shouldn't just refer to these verses, but that we should read them. So I will read them. Uh, we're told in verse 14, 1 Timothy 6, 14, that we should keep the commandment until the appearing of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ, which will come about at the proper time. And Jesus is called in verse 15, the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone possesses immortality and dwells in unapproachable light. Now, where does that light come from that the enthroned King of heaven dwells in? It doesn't come from the sun. As a matter of fact, the sunlight comes from the person who dwells in that light. There is such a thing as uncreated light. Now turn to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation 1, John sees, John has a vision of the risen Christ. And here's what John says in verse 16. John, uh, Reve excuse me, Revelation 1, 16. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun, shining in its strength. Where did the light come from from his face? didn't come from the sun. As a matter of fact, I don't, wanna, I don't want to rearrange the words of Scripture, but I will say that it would have been just as true, and it could have taught us something that we're trying to learn in Genesis 1, if John had gone on to say, and not only was his face like the sun, but the sun was like his face. You see the difference? 
The point I'm trying to make is that his face existed before the sun existed. So the sun came later, the S-U-N. The light that came from the face of the S-O-N was first. Okay, so on the first day, God creates light and he separate. he makes night and day before he makes the sun on the first creative day. There is an evening and a morning in terms of alternating periods of light and darkness because God arranged time, night and day, in a different way those first three days than he did from the fourth day on. The scripture also tells us that, um, we're, that he'll, he'll rearrange it again and there'll be a time when there's no night.